Good evening and thank you for joining us. This is a public meeting for the Taylor Yard Parcel G1, also known as the Bowtie Demonstration Project at 2780 West Casitas Avenue in Los Angeles. My name is Teresa Hernandez. I'm a public participation specialist with the Department of Toxic Substances Control, and I'll be your meeting facilitator this evening. If you need technical assistance, please use the raised hand function on the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This meeting is being recorded. By participating in this meeting, you are agreeing to be recorded. The Department of Toxic Substances Control, known as DTSC, is hosting this meeting. Tonight, we will be pre presenting and accepting public comments related to the proposed draft removal action work plan for a portion of the Boltai project at 2780 West Casitas Avenue in Los Angeles. Again, my name is Teresa Hernandez. I am the DTSC Public Participation Specialist assigned to this project. I would also like to introduce to you all the panelists with the Department of Toxic Sus Substances Control who are joining this evening. Jesse Fierro, Project Manager for the Taylor Yard Project. Ephraim Newworth, Staff Toxicologist. Pete Cook, Engineering Geologist. Edward Fendick, Staff Toxicologist ecological risk, Jose Diaz, unit chief for cleanup, Javier Hinosa, branch manager for cleanup, and Marcia Rubin, unit supervisor for public participation. I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening amongst your many competing priorities. The meeting is scheduled from 6 to 8 p.m. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide information about the proposed draft removal action work plan or RAW, which is a plan to clean up contamination, respond to your questions, and accept public comments. Jesse Fierro, the DTSC project manager, will give a presentation followed by a question and answer period that Marcia Rubin and I will help facilitate. The Q&A is specifically to answer any clarifying questions you may have of Jesse's presentation. After the Q&A period, we will begin the public comment session for the record. All public comments will be responded to and included in the response to comments document, which will be uploaded to EnviroStore and sent to those providing their contact information. If you would like a copy of this document sent to you, please send your contact information to me via email and note if you would like to receive it by email or mail. The comment period began on April 3rd and will now close on May 22nd. If you would like to submit further comments after tonight's meeting, please email Jesse Fierro at jesse.fierro at dtsc.ca.gov. That's jesse, J E S S Y dot Fierro, F I E R R O at dtsc.ca.gov. For more information regarding this project, please visit the Taylor Yard Parcel G1 DTSC Envire Store webpage. To review project documents in person, please visit the Rio de Los Angeles State Park located at 1900 North San Fernando Road in Los Angeles, or make an appointment to review them at the DTSC Chatsworth Regional Office at 9211 Oakdale Avenue. We are hosting these, this meeting from different locations and request that you bear with us if there is a time lag or other technical issues. We sincerely appreciate your patience, understanding, and cooperation in making this a successful meeting. For folks who may have recently joined, I would like to give another reminder to select your language preference. All participants need to make a language selection, English or Spanish, to fully participate in the meeting. If you need a hand with this, please let us know. Is anyone having trouble? DTSC is a department under the Environmental Protection Agency. DTSC's mission is to protect California's communities and environment. We oversee the cleanup for hazardous waste and materials when they are released to the environment. With that, I will now invite our presenter for tonight's meeting, Jesse Fierro, the DTSC project manager, to begin our presentation. Jesse. Thank you, Thank you Teresa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jesse Fierro. I am a senior environmental scientist with the Department of Toxic Substances Control and the project manager for the Taylor Yard Parcel G1 demonstration project. I would like to begin by providing some background 
on this project. The larger image here in color shows the 243 acre former Taylor Yard railroad maintenance facility in multiple colors. The Taylor Yard parcel G1 is the area in pink. And over the years, some of these parcels have been cleaned up and developed for different land uses. The second image above shows an outline of the Taylor Yard parcel G1 area. The three acre demonstration area is outlined in red and is part of the larger 18 acre parcel G1, also known as the Bowtie parcel. This project is located near the Glendale Freeway and the LA River with nearby commercial businesses. It is also near a school and a park, which is further south of the project area. The project area is currently vacant. Next slide, please. Southern Pacific and later Union Pacific conducted rail operations at the former 243-acre Taylor Yard site over 70 years, for over 70 years. The demonstration project outlined here in red was utilized for storing materials, construction materials, and as a parking lot. In 2003, California State Parks and Recreation purchased Parcel G1. State Parks and the Nature Conservancy are working together in collaboration to develop Parcel G1 for future development, for future redevelopment. And the Nature Conservancy is assisting State Parks fund the cleanup of the demonstration project. In 2021, the Nature Conservancy entered into an agreement with DTSC to investigate and remediate the demonstration project. Next slide, please. This diagram shows DTSC's investigation and cleanup process. For this project, the investigation has been completed. We're now in the remedy selection stage, which is shown in yellow. DTSC reviewed the draft removal action work plan prepared by Amicus Strategic Environmental Consulting. We, I will discuss this further in the upcoming slides. So part of this process includes requirements under the California Environmental Quality Act. This ensures the public is notified of the environmental uh, remediations, potential impacts, and any mitigation measures. In this case, an initial study mitigated negative declaration has been prepared by Stantec and is available for public review. State Parks is the lead agency for this for this uh, CEQA project, and DTSC is the responsible agency. DTSC will prepare a statement of findings based on our review of the initial study mitigated negative declaration at the end of uh, the public comment period. Once the public comment period ends, DTSC will consider all comments prior to determining whether the draft removal action work plan can be approved. If the removal action work plan is approved, the remedy will be implemented using appropriate safety measures and will need to follow local, state, and federal requirements. After the removal action is implemented, a removal action completion report will be prepared for DTSC's review. And if DTSC finds the completion report acceptable, we then prepare a certification of the removal action. Next slide, please. All right, once we learn about the investigation, uh, about the history of the site, we have an idea of what kinds of contaminants to expect. Because rail yard maintenance operations occurred nearby, we look for contaminants that relate to these operations and look for other common environmental contaminants as well. Um, a drill rig, as you see here, was used to collect soil samples from different locations 
and at different depths at the project area. The samples were then sent to a laboratory to find out what the contaminants are in the soil and their concentrations. Next slide, please. This is a map showing the multiple soil and soil vapor borings uh, that were conducted or investigations conducted at the parcel G1. And these investigations were conducted from 1990s, from the 1990s to 2022. It also shows four areas where soil removals were co uh, completed in 2004. The blue area shows the soil borings located at the demonstration project from investigations conducted in 2019 and 2022. Next slide, please. This is a summary of the investigations conducted at the demonstration area. In 2019, under a grant from US Environmental Protection Agency, the contractor Weston obtained soil samples from the surface to 20 feet below ground surface at five foot intervals. The samples were analyzed for metals, petroleum compounds, volatile organic compounds also, and volatile organic compounds. These chemicals can be as associated with older paint, fuel degreasing, and other operations. The samples were analyzed for, uh, were also analyzed for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are chemicals that can be found in fossil fuel and also when coal, oil, gasoline, or wood are burned. The results indicate that contamination exists in shallow soil in some locations within the project area. And additional sampling was conducted in 2022 by Citadel to provide more information for the removal actions. Next slide, please. So for the demonstration project, soil concentrations were evaluated using the most protective screening levels or residential land use screening levels. This screening level was not a regulatory requirement. This list shows, shows uh, the chemicals found at the site that are above screening levels in the top two feet of the soil in some samples. The chemicals include lead, polycyclic, aromatic hydrocarbons, PHs, also known as PHs, and petroleum compounds. We found no contamination below two feet that was above the screening level. The investigation report recommends a removal action to address contamination and DTSE concurred with this recommendation. Next slide, please. A draft removal action work plan is typically prepared to address contamination and evaluate cleanup actions, cleanup options. These cleanup options were evaluated based on criteria developed by US Environmental Protection Agency that we use at many cleanup sites. The criteria includes long-term effectiveness to reduce contamination, the cost of the cleanup, and whether the cleanup option can be implemented effectively. This is an Im image of the draft remedial sorry, uh, redevelopment design for the project area. Removal of the soil will help facil facilitate this uh, redevelopment. Next slide, please. So cleanup options are outlined further in detail in the draft removal action work plan. This first option, no action, is typically compared to other options as a baseline. 
We also looked at phytoremediation uh, as one of the options. This cleanup method uses plants or trees to take up contamination and assist in degradation. However, this would take a long time, a long period of time to effectively address the contaminants. So based on our review of the remedial options, DTSC's recommendation is excavation and offsite disposal. This has been an effective measure at other sites with similar contaminants. The plan is to remove all soil at, uh, to two feet within the project area. And you can see that in the shaded green area. Next slide, please. As part of the draft raw, um, we need to consider safety precautions during the cleanup. These plans are described in the draft raw removal action work plan and will be prepared in detail as part of the demonstration project construction and submitted for DTSC's approval prior to the beginning of the work. The health and safety plan ensures soil and activities are appropriately managed. The air monitoring plan ensures activities are managed to reduce dust from being generated. And the transportation plan will be prepared to reduce impacts as soil is transported offsite. Next slide, please. So this is the future site redevelopment plan. The image above is a cross section of the project area. The redevelopment will include the following. Storm water will be treated and daylighted into the wetland area. There will be native vegetation, walking paths, a boardwalk, and viewing platforms. This now concludes the presentation of the materials for the draft removal action work plan for the tail yard parcel G1 demonstration project. Tedessa will continue with the remaining portion of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for your presentation. For all questions regarding the future redevelopment plans, please contact Kelsey Jessup, Urban Cons Conservation Project Director, Sarai Jimenez, External Affairs Outreach Associate, and from California State Parks, Stephanie Campbell, Manager of Planning, Public Affairs, and Community Engagement, Angeles District, who are participants in tonight's meeting. As a reminder, we will be taking public comments after the Q&A session. Please hold all comments for the official comment record until that time has been announced. We'll go to the comment if the Q&A ends early. And while we recognize that there is a limited time for comments, people may also provide comments via email and mail. If you have a question or comment, please raise your virtual hand using the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type it into the Q&A. If you are calling into your Spanish line, please give us a few moments and our interpreter will call on you. We will do our best to respond to questions in the order we receive them. We will begin by taking some of the questions entered into the Q&A during the presentation. Marcia, would you please read the first question, if any? We don't have any, Teresa, thanks. Okay, we will now take some questions from those with their hands raised. Alejandro, I'm going to ask to unmute. You can go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for for um, having me here. Uh, I got a question. Um, so uh, I just I just got to the I just uh, uh got to home and, and entered the meeting a few minutes ago. So I most of the um uh most of the the information I I, I missed most of the information the presentation. So. Um, I saw that that this there, there will be a plan uh, at the last uh, uh, picture that that uh, that you guys showed. So, will the site plan will include an area dedicated only for endangered species 
and protected species of birds and, and other wildlife? Because I, I haven't, uh, it's, it's not been mentioned at any uh, on any plan or at any meeting. They just say that this is gonna help the wildlife, blah, blah, blah. But we have an, a very, uh, a lot of issues with, with some of the species that are endangered species, like the least best virio. Then, and uh, it's been reported to the uh, all the state agencies and, and federal agencies and, and, and uh, city agencies too, but nothing has been done. So we are afraid that you guys are going to promise something that you won't deliver. So that's my question is the, if the plan, the site plan will include a, an area for endangered species of birds and wildlife? Um, thank you for that question, Alejandro. That question, um, you would uh, need to contact uh, Stephanie Campbell directly through uh, from State Parks. Um, she is, we just posted her um, email address on onto the chat. Um, so that question would be directed for directly to her. Oh, oh okay. I, th I thought you were gonna answer any type of question, but I have a question to Mrs. Fierro, if you don't mind me to ask the question. No, go ahead. Oh, thank you. So uh, you said you're gonna reduce the impact when the, all the dirt is going to, the, the, the polluted or the contaminated dirt is going to be uh, taken out from place, the site. And you say the, the, uh, it will, uh, you're gonna do something to reduce the impact, to, to reduce the impact to what standards? Because we have been told the same thing. And at the end, we, we saw and we have videos and, and pictures of uh, the, the, the dust that is, that is created by all this uh, uh, construction. So to, to what standards and what are you guys gonna do to prevent from us to breathe all that uh, uh, pollution? Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. The draft removal action work plan talks about uh, adhering to the Southern California Air Quality Management District rules. And uh, we will be getting a air monitoring plan that will have details on exactly you know, what measures will be done as part of their uh, construction management. So they, they have a construction contractor that will also be preparing the air monitoring plan and we'll have more details on that. But um, definitely we will want them to make sure that the dust is controlled. You wanna mention some of the measures, Jesse? He missed most of the presentation, like spraying and speed tests. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the um, Southern California Air Quality Management District's uh, rules uh, include watering, bare soil areas to ensure that dust is not kicked up. Uh, that's a preventative measure. And um, once activities are, are going on that um, watering continues, there uh, we will also require uh, dust monitoring with devices, with instruments to ensure that they keep up with the uh, AQMD rules. And um, there are other measures to make sure that the vehicles traveling in the on the roads on the on on the site are at reduced speeds. Thanks, Jesse. I believe Javier has maybe additional. Correct. Uh, good afternoon, Alejandro. My name is Javier Hinojosa, and I'm the uh, branch chief for the Chatsworth office. And I just wanted to add, you know, in addition to the AQMD rules that have specific standards, we also uh, typically ap apply a special plan called the Community Air Monitoring Plan that includes fence line monitoring. And uh, that has special calculations based on the uh, impacted soil that will um, verify that all the day-to-day -day operations do not exceed any of the values. So in addition to the all the on-site controls um, that are stipulated in the AQMD rules, rule 403, 1466, and, and um, you know, we have the uh, camp 
uh, guidance yeah. that will uh, specify that for, uh, for you. And then in addition to that, you know, we rely on you that if there's any observations that you have our contact information to communicate to that so that we can take actions on site in case um, you, we may not be present. So we uh, will work together on this to control that. I couldn't hear the question. Is it just me? No, no that question was about um, safety controls. And it looks like Alejandro has another. So we'll go ahead and let him speak. Oh, th thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to be the only one uh, asking questions. <laughs> let me know when okay. you need to shut up. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, no, we have a lot of concerns. The community in the Elysian Valley and uh, at water at Blasel Park and Los Feliz, because in the past, uh, the projects like this were um, were conducted and they did the same, they promised us the same thing. They're going to use water, they're going to use, they're going to be extra careful, only five miles the vehicle will be traveling and all that. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work. So they created a lot of dust. Uh, they pour water, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Also, <clears throat> because there was a lot of water, mud was created. So that mud ended up on the streets to the, uh, next to the uh, adjacent to the site and, and right in front of the, the sites. So all that contaminated uh, soil was spread all over the place. And, and when it dries out, it's, you know, become air, uh, airborne. And we, our family, we were, uh, we were, uh, breathe and all that. So who's gonna be in charge of control that this won't happen again? And, or who uh, are going uh, to be at the site, making sure that this won't, won't happen? Thank you. If, if I can answer that, Jesse, is that okay? Sure. So so the, uh, so, some of the issues that you've raised, you know, about the past, you know, we can't really address at this meeting, but moving forward, you know, the plan is to have these controls in place. And uh, the point people here are Jesse Fierro, whose contact information you have, whose ideas, and, and myself. And we can make that information available in the chat uh, for, for any, any concerns that you observe that we don't observe now. Our oversight is a, is a regular oversight, but it's not, you know, we're not there 24 hours, you know, during the excavation. And uh, the excavations of this contaminated soil is for a uh, finite uh, period of time that yeah. we're responsible for. And in addition to that, uh, AQMD will be conducting their own inspections. And they're always a resource as well to uh, respond to. And they have authority to stop work and issue penalties and violations as well. Uh, specifically, Rule 403 has um, track out. Uh, um, content that limits track out to, I think, 25 feet. Um, and, you know, the the um, the dust sweepers sometimes use water. Well, we'll, we'll see whether we use water or not water. And uh, depending on how much dust is coming off, the frequency of trucks, but it, it is a process that is adjusted as work is going on. And uh, and so the, the water trucks on site from the excavated areas uh, across the rest of the site so it's a, it's an iterative process. And in the beginning, we're going to try to uh, control all of these things. But again, it's it's going to require a partnership here. Uh, but certainly DTSC project manager, geologists will be out there uh, periodically checking in on the activities. And uh, there's also the contact information for the uh, general contractor in charge of the excavation as well. And we'll be in contact with them. And there will be the, the monitoring verifying uh, dust, you know, some of it can be visual. Some of it uh, will be also data driven. Uh, so it's, it's a combination of everything, right? And, um, you know, we hope to not repeat uh, the past problems you've had in the community uh, from this work. Thank you, Javier. Um, we'll go ahead and move on. I don't see any um, uh, callers that have called in on the line. So we'll go ahead and move over to the um, Spanish interpreters and check with them to see if there's any questions on the Spanish line. I don't um, hear any questions from the Spanish phone line. So we'll go ahead and, and um, move on. 
we are uh, we will now begin the public comment session of the meeting the format will be similar to the question and answer period if you would like to verbalize your comment please raise your hand if you would like to provide your comment in writing we will display the ways to comment at the end of the meeting we will now take comments from those with their hands raised anybody on the line that would like um to make a comment i don't see any hands raised um so i'm gonna go ahead and close out this meeting there so as a place. yes i'm sorry oh here there we go is. sorry about that go ahead alejandro thank you um there's no more callers there's no more callers no what? Well, we yes. work. I, uh, okay, um, so we are talking about G1, right? Bow tie. Yes, G1, so are, portion of the G1. Okay, what are the current toxic levels at bow tie and the part of uh, at bow tie? Jesse, uh, would you like to go ahead and answer? Well, this is a comment section part of the meeting. Um, comment, okay. Mm -hmm. But can you can you oh. answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to find those in the raw that we're talking about, right, Jesse? Yes. Okay. Yes, the, we have elevated levels of uh, petroleum and uh, the uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and lead. So uh, the cleanup is for residential land use. And um, if you need uh, specific numbers, uh, you know, they're, they are in the, in the removal action work plan. They're summarized there. So Alejandro, because we're, um, we're in a comment period for the decision on whether to approve this work plan, we had the we had the prior segment for question and answers before, and this part of the meeting is just to record people's comments that will um, will transcribe, and then um, that the people who make the comments will get a formal response. So, if you want to enter a formal uh, a formal comment that you'd like a written response to after the comment period closes, this is the time to enter your comment if you would like to do that verbally. Does that help? Yes, so I'm going to let someone else make a comment and then uh, I'm going to make my own comment if if it is okay. Why don't you just go ahead because we oh. haven't we haven't had any others. You're okay. okay. Uh, thank you then. Um, parks are are good. Uh, I don't oppose to the like, creation of more parks, but uh, we have other main issues uh, those Angeles or Angelinos are facing such as uh, water and homelessness. Unfortunately, homelessness, they've been acquired, they've been uh, uh, a lot of uh, resources uh, spent on it and, and they haven't, they haven't uh, produced any, any good um, results. But uh, uh, in terms of water, who, that's the question I've been asking to 100 Acres Partnership, uh, who decide that we, the, the, the residents of the, the uh, communities adjacent to this site, we wanted a, a park. We already have many parks around here. So taking in consideration the needs of, uh, of, uh, of Angelinos right now and main issues, I think a water reservoir should be more or better than, than a park. Like uh, for example, uh, uh, Silver Lake uh, Water Reservoir, something like that, where we can, we can secure some water, but also can be open for us a recreational area all around to to the public. I I believe that um, uh, the agencies involved are not really focusing on the needs, but the wants of some individuals or or entities. So I I I believe this this uh. 
this site could be uh, used in, a, in a, a lot better way than just a park because it's going to be another amenity for the newcomers that, uh, and it will keep triggering the, the gentrification of our communities, unfortunately. Uh, let me know when I need to stop or how much time do, you, do I have? Um, you have plenty of time, so make oh, make your whole comment. It's fine. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. I don't want to. I was. Uh, okay. No, you're fine. So, uh, and then the process that is being is being uh, 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 taken. It's 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 a little bit cloudy. We don't we don't uh, at the meetings we are uh, somehow prevented from from make make uh, comments just because don't align with the. Uh, the, the the plans or the agenda for this for this project. So most of the people in our communities have been have been ignored, and uh, and that's bad because we are going to be either affected in a good or bad way for the creation of all these projects because we haven't been included like like uh, uh, like will include in, in the decision of what do we want all these areas to 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 be and uh and also the the pollution at these sites is extremely high uh unfortunately in the past uh people were allowed to enter all these sites with no restrictions it is just yesterday they there were people playing at, at the boat type and i have been reporting i have reported i don't know how many times to vtse to 100 acres partnership california state parks that there is no, uh, uh, there is fully access to open access to all the sites. So that uh, that shows the the lack of interest to protect the the health, uh, uh, safety, and welfare of of community members and and public as in general. So how how can we trust? All these agencies when they're failing to provide us with the very minimum of uh, safety and, 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 and health, uh, um, uh, how do you say, um, needs to all these parks. So I, I, I was in program, but thank you for your time. And that, that's my, my, uh, my comment. I will submit a different one in, uh, uh, via email. Thank you. You're muted. Thank you, Alejandro, for your comment. Um, as a reminder, the public comment period opened on April 3rd, 2023, and will conclude May 22nd, 2023. Please submit all comments by May 22nd, 2023. Written comments can be submitted to Jesse Fierro via email or mail. Email at jessiefierro.dtsc.ca.gov. U.S. mail to Jesse Fierro, project manager at 9211 Oakdale Avenue, Chatsworth, California, 91311. Thank you for your interest and for participating. Please be sure to provide your written comment by the end of the public comment period. Thank you again and stay safe.